Uncle Mark here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, thanks for showing up too. We're going to learn something today. Get right to the chase. I'm working on a 2015 Ram 1500, but this will be similar probably with uh, all the trucks that Ram makes. Uh, we're going to show you how to take, if you need to get to your heater controls or if you need to get to your radio, how do you take that faceplate off? It's going to be fairly in depth. This is going to be pretty much in real time. So you'll see any of the issues I'm going to have. You look down at the very bottom in the descriptions, there's uh, chapters there that you can skip in case, you know, you get to a certain point and it's good enough. You want to skip ahead or you want to skip back. We'll show you how to do this and uh, hopefully, you know, we both learn something as we go through this together. One last point, I'm also going to show you a little bit about how to get to the actuators that run the vents also. So if I need that part, you'll also see that in the chapters. Enjoy the video. So I'll show you how to I take this thing apart. Now this should unclip for gentle. And of course, you know, it's plastic, so it's a possibility you could break it in some places. You want to be very careful. Now, I hadn't had this apart before, so I was figuring, you know, the little tray here, well, maybe there's some screws behind there. And yeah, under the little tray with all the junk in there, there are actually two little torque bits. Or screws. Yeah, uh, fishing hook not included. There they are right there. Little guys. We'll see what size they are. Now you could use uh, something like this with them. Now I'll put maybe a link in the description for something similar to that. Uh, but I actually had a screwdriver with the right tip on it. That worked out pretty good. Uh, you can buy little rails with uh, the sockets. I'll put a link maybe in the description too if I can find some. And uh, I was checking in this truck, is there anywhere else? And it looks like just the top had the screws. But it's easy to break, so I want it to be careful. Yeah, more junk. You don't want to do this in the cold because, you know, that's when things break. Take all the valuables out first before they all fall out on the floor. You won't have to pick a bunch of stuff up. I was just checking under here too, you know, is there screws? Some some vehicles will have screws in the bottom of this, but this doesn't. On this uh, 2015, this exact model, it just is held in with clips. More stuff. So we're just double checking, making sure no screws. And you can see if we look in here, there's a couple clips where at the very bottom, where in the back. Oh, there you go. See the clip right where my finger is right there? Sorry, it's not in focus, but so I think there's two clips in the bottom. Problem is here, uh, there's some wires now holding it in. You have to feel around and see where you can unclip them. I'll try and show you what the clips look like. But for this one, it's just got the single uh, heater control. It doesn't have the dual zone, which might not make really any difference as to the way those wires are. Maybe it works with the dual uh, too. They might just be using the same wiring, just adding an extra switch on this. You can plug them from the back if you try. And then uh, the gear shift lever is going to be in the way. So I better set the parking brake, which I don't show you here. Once the parking brake is set, you can pull the gear shift out of gear. If you have all the wires off. I still have one wire on there. I've, this is for one of the push-in switches. And that's how it comes out. For whatever reason you're taking it out for. What I'm doing here is it's having some trouble with the heat. You may have seen I did another video on uh, there was heat on one side and cold on the other. There's a couple little nuts here. Uh, I think there's four on the top and two on the bottom. Look at the top ones off first. It seemed easier. Maybe you should do the bottom ones first, but what size is this baby? 
Seven millimeter. I had a little quarter inch seven millimeter uh, socket, but I used an adapter. So I could use my three eighths. Try and get them all out. Speed it up for you a little bit. There should be some chapters in the description below if you need to skip ahead or if you need to see a part again. I'll move you over uh, down below and show you how this piece, this clips on here too. Gently. Floating aside. And then you'll be able to access, there's uh, two little bolts under here too. Same size as seven millimeter. See the one there, way up there. And on this side, there you see it. Plus it's got those little fingers that kind of hold everything in place. So we'll do the same thing. Take them out, just put your uh, little bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them, somewhere safe. Maybe all together in a little cup or something. Usually I have this little dish that's magnetic and it holds them all together. I don't know why I didn't use it this time, but... Then this should pull out. Now on this one, on the left side, there's a power outlet there you can see. We'll have to unplug that. I think this one is uh, switched to the key. There's one on the other side, but I couldn't figure out how to unplug it. It just seems a little different. I think it's a USB charger. So I played around with it a little bit, and it's like, ah, just leave it hang there. Look at that. And I found this. Uh, typical Canadian. Canadian Tire Money. It's uh, kind of like a hardware, big store. And they have their own... Uh, it's a reward. They used to give you actual money like this. It's even serial numbered. You can use it to buy things uh, back at the store. There are actually other places in Canada would actually take it as legal currency. Not everywhere, but you know, they would let, they, they could spend it on stuff they wanted to. Mostly little mom, mom and pop places. And we'll try and get this thing back in. Uh, I didn't know how it came apart, so I unplugged it all. I guess you didn't really have to unplug it. Uh, I need it plugged back in because I want to be able to run uh, your vents. Some issues with uh, which vent is working, which vent isn't. Is it going to the windshield? Is it going back down to the foot? So it's plugged back in and I'll show you the little servos that are in behind here. And these basically just run the blend doors for, like I say, defrost, heat, uh, heat on the floor or cold on the floor and your vents. And there's two of them because you can do a bunch of different things, right? You can do just defrost on the windshield or you can do air on the floor or you can do your vents. But then they do some tricky stuff where you can do, I believe, defrost and your feet, or the vents and your feet, or the vents and defrost in the windshield. So they actually use two different little servo motors to open a couple different blend doors. So basically you're gonna need the key and the ignition to be able to run them. And you might be able to feel if they work or not. I should have really put a towel down here. I didn't scratch the thing, but my truck's a little bit older now, so it might not have hurt if I did scratch something, but I w you don't want to scratch it. This isn't my truck, by the way. My wife actually made some comment when she was watching this. She says, "Woo, that truck dirty. I says, it wasn't in, I wasn't cleaning it. I was just trying to figure out which one of these little motors was running which blend door. I did another video where we were trying to figure out which side, what made the heat, what blend door was that, and that's actually in your glove box. I have a video on that. Check out my RAM playlist. And that one you could actually see the position that the blend door was sitting on. These you can't really unless you take the little servo motors, whatever you want to call them, out. They're actually called blend door actuators. And a little bit of trivia, Chrysler, Dodge, whatever, Ram. These used to be Dodge Rams, right? Under the Dodge label, and then they just got rid of Dodge, and they just call this Ram. So it's a, it's a Ram 
1500 truck or 2500 or 3500 but it's ram so if you're looking for parts somewhere online or something don't look under dodge just look under ram i looked around for a little bit there and how come they don't list anything under dodge how come they don't have the truck for this year well because it's a ram truck So I'll get you a little closer. We'll get some light on the situation. Make sure the radio's off. Don't want to break any copyright thing. It's hard to get all your lights lined up and stuff like that. That's why you see a lot of guys, they just show you from here, you know, good enough, right? Well, not good enough for us. I've got the fan running a little bit. You'll have to have the key on and your fan running at least low. And these trucks, you can actually shut the fan all the way off. You don't want that because then these things won't work. So I'll point what they are. They're these little boxes here. Can you hear that? What you can do if you're not sure which one it is, you could unplug one and then play around with your heating controls. Like say this should do your, your vent, your feet, your windshield. And if it makes no changes, that's probably the motor. Ended up unplugging both of them to figure out which was which. Plus then once, if you have them unplugged and you undo the screws and pull them out, oh, you can actually manually Move the little blend door. So you see the little silver screw there. Give you some little better lighting. Just a Phillips screwdriver. This bottom one is a little tricky to get out. But you can get out, try not to lose the screw. Then I use the stubby because this thing in front of us here that holds all the heater controls is just in the way. You can get these screwdrivers just about anywhere. Don't use the stubby too often, but when you need it and you don't have it, let's just pull straight out. Ooh, the door closed. They're kind of weighted. So you want it to be either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Here, I'll plug it back in and you can see how this little motor works if you want to see if the actual motors are working or not. Again, with the key on and the fan running on low. If you play with your controls, you should be able to get this thing to move around a little bit. There it goes. So like you say, you should have it either uh, get it to run all the way, I think, clockwise. Darn. No, and I didn't do that. Or did I? I think that's the way it is. You'll see if you take one of these out what I'm talking about with that blend door. No, speed it up a little bit. See if my finger I can actually No, it looks like no, this one's counter. No clockwise, sorry, yeah, clockwise. Scratch that. You see how it falls down because of the weight of the little blend door? So you want to make sure your motor is turned all the way, or this actuator all the way to the right before you put it on. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't sticking or nothing. That's another thing. Sometimes those blend doors fall apart inside there, and they jam. So this is another way to show that it is working. So we know this motor is working, and the blend door is working. Put those screws back in. And I'll take the other one off. Uh, 
so it's uh, like I say, it's the actuator, not the heat. Uh, it's a blend or. Try to put the screws back in. This is there's some things you can check out on your own if you're a little bit mechanically inclined. You know, if you're paying $100, $150 an hour for somebody else to look at it, if you could figure out that one of these didn't work and it was actually that unit and not, you know, I'm going to label it because this truck might come back and might save me some time. Uh, if you could figure out which, you know, that it was one of these actuators, you could just order them online and then put it in. And I believe these two are identical. They've just got one upside down and one right side up. So if it had been one of these, you know, it would have saved the guy, you know, 100, 150 bucks or something like that. But unfortunately, that wasn't our problem here. What I was looking for was actually to find, he's got a problem where the heat wasn't working on the driver's side. See, this one's working too. So you know the little actuator actuates. And I'll check the blend door too. So this one, I think it's the same thing. If you turn it counterclockwise and let go, it just falls down to the one position there. So I'll have to make sure that the blend or actuator turns all the way clockwise, which I'm doing right now. You have to think upside down, right? So when you put it back in, that it was actually running the right way. If you get them mixed up, you're gonna find that nothing works. Sometimes these little actuators, they've got a bunch of little plastic gears in them and as they get old, they break. And then the motor's turning, but it can't turn that little black uh, gear there. That's usually what the problem is. And of course, if none of these move, then you probably have a problem somewhere else, possibly your controller. So I'm gonna buck that vent defrost, yeah. They kinda are dual purpose, so it's not really correct what I've written on there, but. So back to if you've taken this all apart, but maybe you're at, going at your radio or something, maybe the radio is old enough, it's not working now, and you just want to replace it. You may have an issue with that too. A lot of them have to be coded to the vehicle. So you'll plug it in and it still won't work. Uh, some vehicles, you have to do some special things before you take it out of the old vehicle. Otherwise, it goes into security mode and it'll never be able to be put in another vehicle just by unbolting and unplugging it, you can't do that. So I would, if that's what you're planning on doing, check around, do some research, see what you can do and cannot do. So I'm gonna unplug this again. It's got a tab or tang on one side, you just have to push it and then pull out. This bottom one I'd plug back in, but that really doesn't have anything to do with the heater controls. It's either, uh, I think it's your four-way flashers, possibly. Let's see how this all goes back in. Now you're not going to want to forget to plug in this power um, outlet, I guess is what it is. So it's... This white one only goes in one way and you need well I'm trying to hold a camera and plug this in not easy to do unless you had both hands free which I probably should have thought of when I was filming this anyway click it's together again it's got little fingers there that'll sit into one hole and the screw goes in the other hole just make sure your wires are out of the way is what I had to do because I'm trying to hold a camera, I'm trying to put this in place. Sorry, I don't. If I'm making you sick by moving around too much, I'll sit it on a tripod here again, a little tripod. 
Not much room in this truck. It's a regular cab truck. I can't even see where I'm poking that in there. You might need a couple of extensions just to give you some room. Do this side, do the other side. Might have to jiggle this stuff around too so it fits properly. Nice to have some kind of a, a cool light, like a little LED light or something. I'm not, not one of those old trouble lights with the 100 watt hot light bulb that melts you and melts the carpet and melts everything else. I'm just using an LED flashlight with a long, um, oh, remember the little snaps or fingers are going to snap back in there. There's a few of them on this one. If you line it up right, you should just be able to pop it back in. If you think that's brutal, that's the way the dealer does it too. So let's do the top bolts now, I guess. Uh, there's two, there's that one on the right, one on the left. Oh, well, it's access, easy to do. Just about done. Yeah, you might have to push up on the housing a little bit to get it to fit a little better. Do the other side too. We're on the home stretch. Now we just have to plug this stuff back together. Now these two, um, one is for, I think it was your four-way flashers and one is for... Uh, yeah, and there's those little fingers that are going to snap in there too. And they go all around. The bottom on the top. Little screw holes are in there. Make sure that sits the right way. Your truck might have more than this. has got two there, and then it's got this one here for something which nothing plugs in there. So you don't have to worry about that one here, but... Of course, that being said, when I turned the whole thing upside down and went onto this side and couldn't really see what I was doing, I plugged that one in no problem. And then this one, I tried plugging in the bottom here because I couldn't see <laughs> where it belonged. Belongs, I guess is the right word. Give me a second here to figure out. It's like, well, which way does that go? And it sure doesn't seem wide enough. And if I could see what I was doing, there's no little fingers there, contacts to even plug it into. Oh, there it goes, yeah. Brainwave. That one's for something else, not for this one, yeah. Maybe your truck has that option. And those little fingers just snap, or click in there. And you want to make sure it's warm when you do this. Gear shifters probably, probably should... I've mentioned earlier, set your emergency brake so the truck doesn't roll away somewhere. There you go, that was easy enough. Now make sure it's all clicked in there properly. There's two screws on top, little torques. Find out where my screwdriver is. those both in there where's the other one good thing we saw those under there before we started prying otherwise we would have broke something and then get that little rubber shelf thing back on there and then we can put all their valuables back on there clean that ram name up it's kind of dirty and that's it so it was pretty easy. We didn't break anything. That's always a plus. Uh, trying to do it when it's cold. Uh, it's winter time right now, 2021. Uh, what are we? March. And it was a little cool in the garage. I did have some heat on, but the truck sat in here for a little while. You don't want to break those pieces. 
Hopefully that helps you. You can check out my RAM playlist. Uh, I've got a few things. We'll be working on this truck a little more as things happen. And uh, maybe we'll figure out this issue with the heat too on the driver's side. You can subscribe down in the corner if you haven't already. Uh, like I said, RAM playlist up in the corner. Uh, check out the channel too if you haven't before. Lots of different things. We were working on our fifth wheel camper a little bit. A few videos on that. We'll keep expanding all these different playlists. Enough of me yakking. You take care. If you haven't subscribed, uh, the little dog will show you how. Take care from Uncle Mark. Remember to be safe. Your safety is your responsibility and should be priority number one. Also, give me the thumbs up if you like the video. Plus, please subscribe and you'll get all the notifications. It's easy. The little dog will show you how. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. Hello.